Hi pals and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 and today I've got something really, really amazing lined up for you guys. As you may know, if you've been following my channel actively, I uploaded a video one day ago, although probably when you're watching this, when this is uploaded, it's going to be two days ago. Uh, gameplay the KV1S by Callum1, who uh, did really, really well. And I was basically promoting my new email address to which you could send in your good replays so that I could make videos of them if you want to. That email address is antonovreplays at gmail.com. And I really was not expecting this kind of a response. I must say I'm really so proud of my channel subscribers, that's you guys, you know. It's basically six hours after I promoted this email address, my inbox was being flooded by amazing games. And I probably won't be able to upload all of these as videos, but one guy especially really just played so mind-bogglingly well that I just could not not upload his videos. Um, this person is Michi2, I'm not quite sure to pronounce you, uh, might be Michi2, 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 I'm not quite sure. If you're watching this please correct me in the comments how it's pronounced. If you're German it's probably Michi2, I, I don't know, I'm just gonna call you Michi2. Uh, please tell me how you're called in the comments if you're watching this. Now, he, I've got three replays of him lined up. He, straight away, he sent me an email with three replays in them, in it. And all of these replays were nothing short of amazing. Uh, I haven't watched any of them yet. I've only seen the after back report screens. And judging from those, these games are just mind-bogglingly good. Uh, now, okay, that's not, strictly speaking, entirely true because I had to watch this replay before because I was trying to record this once before I did this, but I had my um, default microphone activated, a uh, microphone activated, which is just next to my webcam and my laptop and it just really sucks. So you couldn't really understand anything and that's why I had to record this a second time. This is the only replay of the three that I've watched before. And all of these replays are nothing short of amazing. Especially the third and last one I'm going to show you in his Hellcat is just so, so well played. Now, he's having problems taking out this 82, understandably, because that tank is so ridiculously well armored. It's actually got a, a bit above 200 millimeters of frontal armor, which is without taking the sloping into account, is actually better than the tier 10 German heavy tank for E100, which is just ridiculous. It's actually even better than the whole armor of the mouse, and that's insane. So, yeah, he could um, finally penetrate the commander's cupola, but even that took quite a long time. Now, both his platoon mates are down, but they went down with a fight uh, as our HD, taking down two enemy tanks, and now, you could think, why isn't he shooting at the side of the turret of that KV-1? Well, he's got good reason not to do that because that KV-1 is using the upgraded turret, which has got the same armor all around, which is 90 millimeters, which is pretty good and still has very good bouncing ability. So, he just takes him out by shooting at that little bit of his side armor poking out at, um, behind that wreck. And the score is not good at all for his team. The score 7 to 11. That's not good at all. And this is a very, very tier 5 game. He's only got a Sherman, a Stug, and an SU-85B on his team, which are all very good tanks, but the enemy has just got so much more vehicles. So this is... I, I just don't think he will be able to uh, get this game in the bag. Um, now... The M4 is on full health, and the M4 is a very good tank. Can he get a shot to that? Good, he finishes the KV, not the KV, but M4 puts a shot into that KV-1 just before um, Mitchie does, so Mitchie can take him out, and that's his third frag, which is not all that much. Now, he has to be careful because there's a KV-1 behind him, which might get shots into his ass. So, he now realizes that that Stug's on very low health and he has to start doing the heavy tank's job here, taking hits for his teammates. And so he picks up his fourth kill on a T-34. And 
all the tanks in this base here are in one shot range for him. He takes out the Stug 3 and next he focuses on the M4. And I can't believe that he just bounced off the side armor of the M4. That's, uh, that's just stupid. But the M4 isn't a badly armored tank, but it shouldn't be able to bounce the shell shot of the uh, KV-1. Now what you could see him right there is he was angling his turret even within the reload. Uh, that's clever because that means that it obviously increases the chance of bounces from the turret which is very good. Now he's got his top gun secured and suddenly the game's looking very good again because his team's leading 13 to 12. Um, the enemy team's only got KV-1 and the artillery left. The KV-1 seems to be pretty competent though and he's on full health which can be a problem. He's got some premium shells loaded which can become useful later on, well we'll see. Now he has to be careful here because if the enemy artillery is camping in their base it will be able to hit him in this alley, he's not in artillery cover. So if he shoots his shot goes nowhere near the enemy tank and he was looking for the KV-1 bounce there. This is a very tricky situation. It's not looking good at all now, really, because the M4 and him are both in one-shot range of our KV-1 and the artillery. The artillery would only have to splash damage either of these two, and it would wreck them. Now, you can see him loading APCR premium ammunition here, which is really understandable in this kind of a situation because he just really has to take out that KV-1 there. And you can see, even with the APCR ammo, he's having problems penetrating. But he makes that shot there count, and now this is kind of even it all out a bit, because that means that they're both in one-shot range, and he picks up his seventh kill. And now it's only the artillery left, and this is a potential Radley Walters medal. Now, he says in chat, eight kill game, and is asking the M4 to defend the base. But the M4 appears to be, um, to want to get his second kill and steal the Radley Walters medal from the KV-1 but as you'll see in a second it's just as well that he didn't camp in the base because if he had the um, uh, Mitchie here wouldn't have gotten his Radley Walters medal okay that was a bit of a spoiler really now he's asking the M4 to stop and shot because he really really wants to make this Bradley Walters medal but then a blessing from heaven comes and the Panzer SFL 4B is capping that's just the absolutely stupidest thing that this artillery piece could have done in this situation it's mind-bogglingly stupid because he's just basically screaming out here I'm here please come and shoot me on the other hand if he's camping the corner pre-aiming he can kill Mitchy here in his KV-1 because he's on that low health. Coming round that corner is going to be so so risky for Mitchy, but he's got his Radley Walters medal in range. He just has to reach out and grasp it basically, but it's still so close. So he's poking around the corner, he's not going for any BS, just going right round it. Oh! He can't take him out in the first hit. Can the Panzer fall? Not shell, and he misses a second shot. I can't believe, it. but the RT oh, misses, and yes, he gets the Radley Walters medal with his eighth kill. I can't believe how tense and close that game was. Such an entertaining game to watch. Massive shout out to Mitchy here in his KV1. Amazing, amazing gameplay. But we've still got two other games to go and um, before we watch those we're just gonna have a quick look at the post game stats of this one because they are nothing short of amazing so here's the post battle results screen of that amazing game it got him his mastery badge well okay first of all we're just gonna quickly talk through the experience and credits 40,476 credits is a lot and uh, 1,299 experience without a premium account is very very good as well in a tier 5 tank he picked up his mastery badge of the kv1 and got a spartan medal and he also got a uh, langlades medal for destroying four enemy tanks attempting to cap the base which is very good and then he got the legendary radley walters medal for destroying eight or nine enemy tanks um, in a tier 5 or higher vehicle 
Got a steel wall for bouncing lots of enemies. Obviously got a top gun because he destroyed six or more vehicles, in this case eight. And he got to defend the fort, killing all these tanks in the base. So that was a really, really nice performance. And just look at this battle efficiency panel here. Look at all the kills and the damages, uh, and the damaging hits, and the spots and the crits, and it's just amazing. Uh, yeah, I bet it's not going to come to you as a surprise to you that he dealt the most damage by far on the entire team. He nearly got three times as much as the second best on the team, being as Paul as our, uh, as our HD. Uh, and he got so much experience for a tier, nine, uh, tier 5 game. 1,299, that's basically 1,300, which is just absolutely great for a tier 5. Um, and you can see the enemy team, this M4 Sherman was really good. He got 715 experience and he was on the losing team, so that he did really, really well. In the detailed report, we can see he fired 35 shots, which 22 penetrate, uh, hit and 17 penetrated, which is pretty good. He damaged, uh, he dealt out 1,840 damage, which is a lot in a tier 5 game. Received 18 hits, of which only 7 penetrated and 11 bounced. That's really, really good. He received 3,483 potential damage. That's amazing, considering that this tank has only got a health pool of around 500. That is really, really good. He detected three enemies, damaged nine, destroyed eight, which is amazing, and even got some spotting damage. And uh, he got 192 base defense points. That is unbelievable. This is, that is so much. That's nearly two complete caps defended. And the reason why he got that is because he first of all killed all these enemies in the cap circle. Then he went to hunt the enemy artillery in the enemy's base, but it turned out that the enemy artillery was capping their base, so he came back and then got even more defense points for that. So that was nothing short of amazing. He got. 40,476 credits as I already pointed out and he could keep quite a lot because he didn't buy any new ammunition but that's an amazing feature for tier 5 tanks is that they are very very good money makers so I really hope you enjoyed this game because it was just absolutely amazing but we've still got two more to go which probably won't be less impressive one in the IS-3 coming up next and after that there's just absolutely astonishingly great game in the Hellcat. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. So this is our second game, Mitch E2 again in his IS-3 here on Ensk and he's the number one honcho in his tier 8 heavy tank in this tier 8 game. What you can see straight away is he's taking off a very very aggressive location here, pushing right up into the enemy uh, block of houses here. I always like to call this place here the heavy block because it's usually where all the heavies go to fight it out. He gets a very nice hit into that AMX 12T, also trapping him, and uh, the Lover takes him out. So that was a good start there, taking off an enemy AMX 12T, which is a very dangerous tank, even in this matchup here. And there comes an enemy IS-3, which if you know how to uh, shoot that tank, is not all that difficult to uh, knock out frontally. But it's got this pipe nose, which is especially against low tier tanks, pretty effective armor. And, oh, this is just, that's just a really, really good um, spot for the IS-3 to be, uh, for Michi, not for that enemy IS-3 driver, obviously, because you could just put a great shot through the flank. Now, there's a KV-5 there, and the great thing, I think, about KV-5 is if they're on the enemy team is that they don't really hurt you that much, but if you know how to kill them, they're just a huge XP pinata. You can just really bleed out all their health because they've got the most health of any tank to right and get so many experience. Now, probably Mitch will agree that that shot off a Sherman Jumbo there. Oh, that, that actually is not a, uh, yeah, it is, it is a Sherman Jumbo. It was not the best shot he ever fired in his WOT career because it bounced off his gun mount. It was kind of poorly aimed, if I may say that. Um, now, it would be really good if you could poke round and take out that KV-5, which he does, uh, hopefully, yes. Okay, so that's his very first kill in this game, so, um, yeah, the score again is looking really bad, 4-2-7, and, uh, 
Let's see, can we... The IS-6 is extremely bouncy from the front, and he's angling very well, but he gets through. I thought was just really lucky that that shot penetrated. But this BL-9 gun on the IS-3 is very, very powerful. The IS-3 is generally seen as one of the best tier 8 tanks. And can he take up this KV-1S? Yes! That was just absolutely stupid of that KV-1S doing that move there. I don't know what he was thinking about. So, oh, this Tiger here is on low health, but he draws into cover, that's a shame. Taking out that Tiger would have been really nice. He's got a very nasty gun. He's not really all that good in city maps, really, that Tiger. It's a very good tank for sniping it. He bounces off IS-3, um, not IS-3, IS-6, but now he's just, he's just absolutely playing absolutely balls here, just getting stuck in just absolutely here with that tiger and all these heavy tanks taking out the tiger getting his third kill now he could take out that enemy is6 but he can't reload in time very long reload on this gun here and that was just that happens to me so often as well just that you fire and just in that minute the enemy pulls away and that's something which really annoying because to be able to hit enemy weak spot accurately in that kind of close close combat you have to go into sniper mode but that means that you haven't got that good all-round overview anymore, and that means that this kind of shot can very, very easily slip from your grasp. So that is very, very nice even number there, 3-3-3 three, three, three damage, and the score's still very bad. It's 9-12, and he's basically the only tank on his team that is doing really good work here, picking up four frags up till now, and this Yak tag is just absolutely stupid. I mean, oh, did anybody shit in his brain? Turning the rear to the IS-6, I mean, the IS-6 definitely is the bigger threat than that Sherman Jumbo. And the <laughs> artillery is going TD mode. Oh, this game has got it all. Even YOLO artillery, and he takes up artillery. That's worth a clap, I love artillery kills. <laughs> Even if they're not my own. And he can take out the enemy IS-6 securing the top gun but now you can see the enemies are capping so he has to quickly take out the Sherman Jumbo so that he's not sitting on his ass when he retreats to his base and quickly go back to break the cap so now he just has to rush now this is a potential Radley Walters medal here if he can take out another tank and there's the T-44 and probably what I would do in this situation is just not bother about the cap and just try to secure Radley Walters though he probably won't manage any more of us what is that T-44 thinking about? So, so absolutely stupid trying to ram an IS-3. I mean, it's obvious he's a medium tank. The IS-3 is a heavy tank. It's absolutely stupid. But, um, as you can see, he's on very, very low ammo here. Only got four ammo left. Would be so great if he could add. Oh, that's so sad. He leaves him on so low health. Would have been so great to see another Radley Walters in that game. But, oh, can he reload in time? So, so, he actually reloaded. But the game finishes so close. But he can't pick up the Bradley Walters medal. And he cannot win the game. But still an amazing stand. Really carrying that game hard, even though he loses. The absolute donkeys his team was. Like, for example, that Yak Tiger 88 was just... He's just absolutely stupid. But... Still, he did a really good job, he did all he could, and again, he would have really deserved that Radley Walters, but he just didn't get it. And still, you know, that was still a really, really good game. So, that was a bit shorter, and that's see how well he did exactly by looking at the after-game stat. So, he got 52,133 credits and 1,583 experience out of that game got a cool headed medal got a steel wall and his top gun just very 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 closely missing as radley walters and that was just so so close um again a massive battle efficiency panel and he dealt out the most damage on the team by astronomical uh, lead in front of the yak pan uh, yak tiger 88 the Yak Tiger 88 dealt out 1,728 damage and he dealt out mind-boggling 5,710 damage. That's like, if I score that kind of result in my IS-4 tier 10 Russian heavy tank, I think, okay, I did pretty well in that game. This is a tier 8 heavy, uh, just really, really, really good. He got 7 kills and 
1583 experience which is a lot on the enemy team who did well the comet was really good doing that well in the tier 8 game that was very very good um let's see the detailed report he fired 21 shots of which 20 hit and the bubble bl9 is pretty inaccurate at this kind of close quarters house to house combat uh, he did very well 17 of his 20 hits penetrated and he did this amazing nearly uh, this amazing damage of nearly 6,000 hit points he received 27 hits of which only six penetrated that's just really good and i was saying that the is3 is not all that heavily armored and i don't really think it is but apparently the numbers speak against what i was saying that's a really really good ricochet quota um he received 6,030 potential damage which even surpasses the damage he dealt out which was really really much and considering that his tanks got 1,500 hit points that's just really really good he detected two enemies destroyed uh, not uh, destroyed he damaged 12 and destroyed seven and picked up 36 spotting damage uh obviously i had to pay quite a lot of credits to refill his ammo because like tier 7 and 8 and higher heavy tanks just absolutely bleed money but still a very very good game and it, it definitely deserves to be shown on this channel because it was just very good but now we come to the part of this video which i've been waiting for all the time the hellcat game if if you saw the after game stats you would know that you're in for a treat when watching this next game as I already pointed out, I haven't seen this game before, so I'm just going to be as surprised by what happens as you guys. But from judging from the after game starts, it's just going to be nothing short of amazing. So let's head right in. Yeah, well, it didn't quite work. I'm really sorry, guys, but something went wrong with my recording program. And every time I try to record this third game which is just mind-bogglingly amazing I've tried three times now and every time I do somehow halfway through the recording it's just only blurred static noise and you cannot hear me speaking anymore and I, it doesn't even record the actual video footage anymore it just absolutely messes up, up halfway through the recording so I'm really really sorry for that guys but I won't be able to bring you the third game in this video but once I fix the problem with my recording program I'll definitely bring this video to you because it was just that amazing a game and I hope you understand I'm really sorry again but it can't be helped so um, just stay tuned to my channel because sometime soon it's going to come up definitely and I hope you enjoyed these other two games anyway because they were pretty amazing and uh, thanks for watching as usual i hope i see you in one of my next videos and uh, yeah sorry again and bye bye